first week aboard and we are leaving Montenegro, sailing for Croatia. We'll need to get our sea legs back under us and navigate the sometimes confusing process of crossing borders with the boat. There's 22 countries bordering the Mediterranean and understanding the check-in and check-out procedures is very important for any long-term sailor here. Today we're actually crossing a border, we're going Montenegro to Croatia, so it's the perfect opportunity to look at that process. But before we jump into that, this is how our first week of the sailing season shook out. First day aboard, walk us through it. What happened today? Woke up, I had breakfast, did some work, pretty boring. But tomorrow we're gonna go for a bit of a sail, if there's wind. Tomorrow we're going to Zelenica. There's another harbor master there, but you can check out. Cause we're gonna check out of here on Saturday and head to Croatia, the land of squid and pizza. Is that their official motto? Just came outside to leave and I noticed that there is a boat that's just drifting along and it's literally about to hit another boat. So I've just sent Eddie over to see if he can check it out. See it just behind this other one where it's the, the smaller sailboat is drifting into that other boat, that other big boat. And it came from way up there somewhere. Okay, well. It looks as though it stopped moving and Eddie's got it. Another day in the life at sea, there's always something going on. Just something you have to deal with that's unexpected. We're on the way. Season three. Might be a little bit of a different season this year, maybe a, maybe a shorter season, but uh, we'll see how we go. We're leaving today from Porto Montenegro, sailing for Selenica. 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 Another harbour master you can check out of Montenegro. Putting us a little bit closer to Croatia for our... Eight hour journey to Dubrovnik tonight. Eight hour journey, is it? Check in. From memory, that was a pretty long, dull sail without any wind, which is our lot tomorrow as well, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, we're very excited to be back on the water. We've got a lot planned for this season. We're gonna sail the coast of Croatia and I guess it all starts now. Ooh. And you're gonna do your <laughs> tra no, tra tra trademark work. <laughs> Made it into our anchorage at Zelenica. We're gonna check out of Montenegro early and head for Croatia and really get underway with our third season aboard Whisper. Can you believe it's been three seasons? Not we, really. We bought this boat thinking we would only have it for one season and then we'd go back and settle down. Now um, we're on our third season. Wild. We've definitely become better sailors. We've learned a lot. I think, we've, I think we've gotten better. Hopefully we're also getting a little better at making these videos. And to that end, we want to change the format up a little bit this season. So the plan is to share our voyage every week, share what we're doing each week, but also share something about what we've learned about living on a boat in the Mediterranean. Anchoring and mooring in the Med, buying a boat in the Med. These episodes will mirror a lot of the information we've got on the blog. So if you're ever looking for more detail, more, more information or somewhere to read the info check out the blog so that's it that's the update let's get after it yeah tomorrow Season we three. set sail for croatia and we're pretty pumped actually we're in that little phase where we're excited and nothing's gone too terribly wrong <laughs> just wait for tomorrow right all right peace out, peace out i guess <laughs> that's the thing that we say now Face on my face? Still? No. It's seven o'clock. We're gonna see if the harbour master is open so we can get an early start on our trip to Croatia. The check in point at Katvat, which is the closest check in point, is closed. Not 100% sure why, but it's closed. So we have to go to Dubrovnik. It'll take us all day in our little boat, especially if there's no wind as is forecast. 
So if they're, if they're open now, which they are supposed to be according to the Harbour Master round in to that, then we can get away by 8 and be in Dubrovnik by mid-afternoon. The Harbour Master is open for business and they quickly cancel our vignette, stamp it and send us to immigration. Now we're going to go take our dock, our boat to the customs office and let them inspect it so they can be on our way. That's it, that was pretty easy. Spoke to the harbour master, got our old vignette stamps, spoke to the immigration bloke, he let us out of the country, and then the customs lady photocopied our documents. Our documents. They said the boat was ours, and then let us, let us go, send us on our merry way. Quick and easy at the start of the day. Hopefully the check-in process at the other end is just as easy, but now we have a eight hour sail to Croatia. Eight hour motor to Croatia, probably it's more going. likely. It's pretty calm out here, this. Yeah. And, and leaving beautiful Montenegro behind. As the sun rises, we have a light breakfast, and soon we're sailing past the fortifications that stand watch over the Bay of Kator and back into the open Adriatic. Bad. I hoped that um, this would be a really pleasant sail and be able to be down below deck doing some work, maybe up on deck listening to some music, but there's a pretty bad rolling swell hitting us from the side and I guess we lost our sea legs being in the bay of Gator, which is so still and flat that I am sick as a dog, but hopefully get us back in the swing of things and we won't be so sick in the future. But this sucks. It's a still morning and we take turns napping as we make our way up the coast. Eventually, we get a bit of breeze. As we cross into Croatia's waters, we hoist the Croatian flag on our starboard side. Just crossing Croatia, we got a little bit of wind, so the sails are up, and we're a few hours from the Bravnik to check in. Done. We just checked in to Croatia at the Dubrovnik port of entry coming from Montenegro. Clearing in and out of countries in the Mediterranean can be quite challenging because it changes country to country, port to port, and even by officer to officer. So it's really important to understand the specifics of the port you're going to and research up-to-date information. We use apps like No Foreign Land, Navali, Navionics, as well as online forums like Med Sailing on Facebook to get the most up-to-date information that we can, especially information from those who've recently crossed the border. And while it does vary a lot from place to place, there are definitely a few things that are always true or almost always true. First off is the courtesy flag. You have to fly the flag of the country whose waters you're sailing in on your starboard side. Don't forget to change that out when you cross into a new country. The next thing you need to do is check into the country you're visiting. So obviously there are a couple of countries on the med that are part of the European Schengen Agreement that have borderless travel, but there are lots more borders that don't have any such agreement where you need to clear in with immigration and let them look at your passport. And then generally the local port authority, the local harbour master also wants to register your boat and your crew list and things like that. So normal procedure is when you get into a new country, heading directly to an authorised port of entry so you can check in properly and doing that before you drop an anchor or go ashore. Another important thing to consider when you're clearing into a new country is just any local regulations or rules. I know today, sailing from Montenegro to Dubrovnik, we can't sail between the Dubrovnik Old Town and some of the inner islands. 
and sailors have actually been fined and they're checking into Croatia. Another thing you should remember is that when you're actually arriving at the Port Authority, you need to use your VHF to request permission to dock. We didn't do this today and we were reprimanded when we got there. After you do that, the normal process is that you will go to the harbor master first. So you'll get your boat registered, you'll get a crew list, um, and you'll pay any kind of taxes or fees applicable. Today we paid 35 euros for a yearly vignette to sail in Croatian waters, which depended upon the size of your boat and how long you're going to actually be there. We were able to pay at the port authority directly, but that's not always the case. For example, in Greece, you need to make sure you make this payment in advance. It's another one of those things to research in advance before you go. In terms of documents, usually they want to see your boat registration, your insurance for your vessel. Sometimes they want to see personal insurance as well. And occasionally they want to see your boat licenses. Make sure you have copies. Yeah, yeah, photocopies are always a great thing to have a few of. In general, you can handle the process yourself. There are a couple of places we've been, like Albania, where they've asked us to use a shipping agent to handle the whole check-in process. And check-out process. And check-out process. And that needed to be arranged in advance and for an additional fee. You may also be required to pay any kind of other taxes. Um, I know in Croatia they have a tourist tax that you have to pay if you're going to sleep on anchor. After the harbour master, it's time to go to immigration where you'll take your vignette that you just received from the harbour master as well as your crew list and any passports and visas that you might need to enter the country. We are not actually European citizens, as you can probably tell by my accent, so we can only stay in the Schengen for 90 days. But this year we do plan to apply for a digital nomad visa in Croatia, so that will give us a bit more time. Finally, we spoke to the customs officers. This is usually the last step in the process. Today they actually came aboard our vessel, which is the first time that's happened in three years. They wanted to do a pretty brief search looked in a couple of cupboards, asked us to open some bags. Normally we just get asked to declare anything, any prohibited goods. Good little reminder that they can jump aboard. I was so, a bit worried. Yeah, luckily, <laughs> I mean, not that we had anything to worry about, that. but it is a good reminder that you should have everything ship shape and uh, not be leave your contraband lying around. And that was the last stage. They sent us on our way. Now we're sitting here at the Marina Frappa, ready to explore Dubrovnik. And if you're worried about the checkout process, it's a breeze compared to the check-in process. All you do is go to the harbour master who checks you out, stamps your vignette, you go through, through immigration like you would any other time, and then at the customs officer may or may not um, look at your documents, mainly just to make sure that the boat is in fact yours before the, they send you on your way. That's a pretty broad overview of the check-in, check-out process in the Med. If you'd like more detail, check out our blog, thebannerbontails.com. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week as we make it a little bit further up the Croatian coastline.